Okay, you may have noticed that we have a really big white space here. That's because we're going over something called Pascal's Triangle. And it's a pattern that it turns out can be used to expand binomials, which is a technical way of saying multiplying binomials by a power. So remember yesterday we had something to the third power, something like x plus y to the third. And Pascal's Triangle could actually help you multiply out something like x plus y to even like the 20th power. It would be a very, very long answer. But it can help you do that without having to actually do all the multiplication because there's a pattern. Okay, so this is how you draw the actual triangle. So start with a 1, and then you're going to draw two more ones like this. And then what it, what it is for the rest of the rows, you're going to have a 1 on each end, and in the middle, you're going to add together the numbers that are in above it diagonally. So 1 plus 1 is 2, and then we put a 1 on each end. And then 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, and then you surround those with a 1. And you can see that it's kind of a, a staggered pattern. And 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4, and then put a 1 on each end. And continue that pattern. You could continue it for like a hundred rows if you want. Luckily, we're not going to go that far. Now let's just do a few more to get the pattern down. Four plus oh, actually, let's start with the end here. So one plus four is five. Four plus six is ten. Six plus four is ten. Four plus one is five. And then surround it with ones. Let's do one more row. Okay, so one plus five is six. Five plus ten is fifteen. Ten plus ten is twenty. 10 plus 5 is 15, 5 plus 1 is 6, and then once again you're going to surround it with 1s. Okay, like I said, you can keep going forever, but I think that's good for now. And the next part that's important to recognize is there's some special things that have to do with the number of the row. We're going to call this, so even though this is technically the second row, we're going to call this 1, and basically that's corresponds with the power of 1. So if you were to expand a binomial to the first power, it's like x plus 1 to the first, you would just have x plus y. And you can see there's just two terms here. You'll see in a minute how that matches, but right now let's just go ahead and fill this out. So that corresponds with 1, that corresponds with 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. I'm going to put some tips down here that we're going to talk about. So these are some things in general. So n is going to be the power right here. Okay. So when it says has n plus 1 terms, so if you expand a binomial to the first power, it's going to have two terms. If you expand a binomial to the second power, it's going to have three terms. So if you had something like x plus y squared, you'd end up with x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Now I want you to notice, do you see how those numbers match the coefficient? And that's the pattern actually. So. On the first one, you can see how those match the coefficient. And if you were to expand x plus y to the third power, you'd end up with x squared, well not x squared. You'd end up with the coefficients, one, I don't know if we have room here, three, three, one, and then you have to just kind of fill in. I think you need a little more space. One, three, three, one. Then you're going to fill in the variables. So if we have an x and a y, you start off with x to the third. Because, oops, why did I put a y? Okay, you start off with x to the third, and it gets smaller each time. I think I just don't have room to do it right here. I'm going to draw it down here. So if we had x plus y to the third, you would have 
one, three, three, one. Okay. And then you're going to have, you start with x to the third, and it gets smaller each time until you get x to the zero. And then the y starts at zero and gets larger each time the exponent does. And you just put plus signs in between those. It gets a little more complicated when you have numbers in front. If you had something like 2x, we'll talk about that after we do this. Okay. And then anytime you have something to the zero, that's just the number one. So to simplify it, you're just going to say x to the third plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus, think of this as a 1. This whole thing is a 1. And you get, oh, I'm sorry, not the y. This is the one that's a 1. And so think of that as just y to the third. And this pattern seems very strange at first. Okay, so that's what I mean by power of a begins with n and decreases by 1 in each successive term and ends with 0. Ends with 0 because that's, that's the pattern. So when we've multiplied this out over and over, it turns out this is the pattern. And then the power of b begins with 0, increases by 1 in each successive term and ends with n. So that's this pattern here. You see it starts with 0, 1, 2, 3. The sum of the powers in each term is n. So just another little side note thing. So notice like 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 0 is 3. That would be a 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 0 plus 3 is 3. So as you're kind of double checking stuff, you could kind of just double check. If you see one that doesn't add up to the power, then you might want to just double check that you didn't get off track. OK, so now we're going to do one with a number. So x minus 2 to the fifth. So this one, we're going to have to really clear some space. So since the power of, since the power of 5, we're going to use this row right here. So we need 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Go ahead and spread it out the whole space. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5. Oh, I think I... Spread a little too far. 10, 5, 1. Because we have to have some space after it. Okay, and now what we're going to do, systematically, we are going to fill in our x. So we have an x. Remember, it starts with 5. x to the 5th, x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, x squared. Oh, you probably noticed. <laughs> I just started with the wrong, I didn't see the one over here at the side. As you can see, I got off track, so you can always fix it by going back. Okay, x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and then you should be ending with x to the zero. If you don't, then double check like I just did. Okay, let's do another color. How about purple? Okay, so now we're going to think of this as... negative 2 right here and you're going to say negative 2 to the 0 negative 2 to the first you notice I'm just adding some little plus signs in between them so all these terms are added negative 2 squared negative 2 to the third negative 2 to the fourth negative 2 to the fifth. And you can see that all of our terms do add up to 5. In our terms, all of our exponents in each cluster add up to 5. Okay, now we're going to do some simplifying. Anytime you have to the 0, that's just going to be 1, which when you multiply by 1, it stays the same. So we get x to the fifth plus, you got to multiply all your numbers together and then combine any exponents you can combine. So we've got 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And actually, I maybe shouldn't have put the plus sign here yet, because you can just write minus 10 times x to the fourth. And then don't put the plus sign yet until we know 
negative 2 squared is positive 4. Positive 4 times 10 is 40. So you're going to have plus 40 x to the third. And then next, we're going to have negative 2 to the third. So negative 2 to the third, think about it for a second. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 10 is minus 80. Negative 80. And we've got x squared. And then negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 times negative 2 again is positive 16. And you can also use a calculator for this. 16 times 5 is, let me think for a second, 16 times 5. is 80, and that's a positive 80. And all we have left is an x variable wise, and then we have our x to the 0 becomes a 1, and then negative 2 to the 5th, you could actually, it's just going to be one power more than what we had before, so negative 2 to the 4th was 16, right? And then 16 times negative 2 is negative 32. And there's no variable left because it's to the zero power. Phew, that was an extremely long answer. So you might say that was an extremely large amount of work. However, just think how much work it would be to expand that by multiplying two of them together and then two more of them together and then multiplying those two together and then one more at the end. Like it would take much longer. So Bear with me, this isn't something you have to use all the time, but it is something that's important to be introduced to. And let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you later. Bye.